Computers used to take up whole rooms, but with microchips, they now fit into the palm of your hand. Similarly, most science is traditionally done on bench tops in large labs, but cutting-edge research is aiming to scale down. Just like with computers, bench top science is shrinking too. So lab on a chip is basically the idea of miniaturizing all laboratory functions on bench top things onto a small miniaturized chip that's the size of about a quarter. High throughput is kind of the idea of running like a very high volume of reactions every day. With droplet microfluidics, what we work on, we can run or generate thousands of droplets per second. Currently, um, on, in bench top settings, the typical operating volume is at the very least one microliter. Um, when you think about robotic pipetting, so with um, microfluidic droplets, we can go all the way down to femto or picoliter droplets. So that's over a million times um, smaller in volume. So if you think about that in cost savings, that's a lot, like a million fold less reagents that you're using. Um, and then scale that up to millions of reactions per day. So that has huge implications for cost. So one um, uh, project that we're working right now is with agriculture. Um, so an agricultural company is interested in using microfluidic chips for their screening reactions. It's really important that we maintain our food supply. So just for this one single application, um, droplet microfluidics could have hu huge implications in terms of helping scientists breed the next generation of plants that can live on a lot less water. So uh, point of care is kind of um, bringing the diagnostics directly to the patient and lab on chip technology like facilitates that, that's the whole idea. To make things miniaturized, like I said, so only using a very small sample to make it a lot faster and more convenient. In low resource settings, it could be where um, medical staff could just go out into um, a village with very few resources and help diagnose um, people that live there with certain infectious diseases or sexually transmitted diseases. Um, in the developed world, maybe it could mean that uh, people could kind of do at home testing for STDs and things like that. Lab on a chip can also be used to study interactions on living cells. One of the benefits of using microscopic laboratories is that we now have the technology to study the basic architecture of cells and figure out how they change their shapes as they move from one place to another. For instance, we can put a cell on a bed of micropillars. As the cell moves across the device, the pillars get bent and this gives us in-depth information of the motion of the cell and its architectural deformations. Furthermore, we can also modify these microscopic laboratories in such a way that it allows us to directly interact with biological structures. Like this engineered tissue engulfing two pillars where one of the pillars is magnetic. We can move the pillar using an electromagnet which will change the shape of the tissue. Thus, we can interact directly with the tissue and can also observe how it responds to external mechanical stimuli. To observe and interact with small biological structures, we need devices on the length scale of few micrometers and lab on a chip technology fits this criteria perfectly. Just as we need precision tweezers to pick up small stuff, these devices are our precision tweezers to study cells and tissues. Lab on a chip is uniquely versatile. It can reduce cost and increase efficiency. It can make a test portable and bring it straight to the consumer. Or it can create a specific environment for fundamental biological research. Sometimes, to think big, you have to think small. <laughs>